Welcome to Dude RV. Hey, I really appreciate you stopping by. And of course you got here just in time because it's Friday and it's time for another edition of Friday's Finds. As you can see, I'm, I'm back down at mom's. This is gonna be kind of a, a deja vu video. That's not to be confused with a Vuja Day video. So a, a deja vu video is like, well, now wait a minute, didn't he just do that? Versus the Vuja Day, that's a video you've never seen. <laughs> so, so this edition of Friday's Finds is once again about tent camping. It's, there seems to be a lot of popularity in that these days. Or at least people wanting me to talk about their tents. So today, our first channel sponsor is the Baralara Baralir, Baralir, Baralir inflatable tent. That's what I said, inflatable tent? What's up with that? Looks pretty cool though. So let's, let's, let's open up this box and see what's in it. First thing we wanna note though, Please open carefully. Returns will only be accepted in the original package. That means if you damage that box, you can't send it back. That's what I interpret. And since it's an inflatable tent, we wanna be real careful and not cut too deep. Our second and third products are gonna be, they're gonna be fun. Tent related and they're gonna be fun. have a big bag. Ooh. Probably weighs 50 pounds. We have instructions and a sewing kit and some patching material. We have a two-way, a, a, a dual valve pump and stakes. And I can already tell you those are gonna be two. They're gonna be undersized. Not, not too, not too much undersized. If we've got a lot of wind happening though, it's a little small. See, it's not, it doesn't tell me how much it weighs, but it feels like thirty-five pounds thereabouts. All right, so let me let me read some instructions, and then we'll start setting up a tent. So the instructions were pretty simple: spread it out, peg it down, peg the ground sheet, inflate the bars, peg the skirt, then peg the guy ropes Pr pretty pretty simple so
Almost there. We're talking about the Baralier inflatable tent. There's some things I like about it. And some things that, you know, the first issue I have is this binds up. So if we're going to close the zipper flap, see how tight that is? That's going to get even tighter on the other side. Definitely not. <laughs> you're definitely not gonna do this in a hurry. Well, maybe if we let some tension off. There we go. Okay. Well, let some tension off. You can see, there's still there's still super tight going across there. I'm not a I'm not a tent designer, so I can't tell you how to fix that. But that that could be a problem. A heavier zipper would be great. So let's take a look inside. Uh, I'm six foot two, so I have to I have to bend my knees, bend my back. I like all the ventilation panels. So we've got one on either end and both side walls are well perforated and we have a gable vent. This is more of a three season tent than a four season. Yeah, because with the, the gable being open, you're gonna wanna make sure you put that toward the, the wind. Plenty of room to lay down in here. Very, actually very spacious tent. You could put a, uh, six people in here. Yeah, six people comfortably. And, and you know I love my, my bell tents. But in, in some ways I, I like this because it's very open in the middle. The only the only real problem I have is the tension on the, the zippers. Making it hard to get in and out. Yeah. So now the question is, or would I actually just buy that? I think for the money, yeah. I, I think I would. But it, it's a, it's not, it's a nylon tent. You got to be careful around the fire. You don't have to worry about a whole lot of pieces and parts. One of the things I really like about it, you're not having to put poles together and thread them through. You just you make sure you have your air pump. No air pump, no tent. <laughs> Would not be fun trying to blow those things up. Baralar. I think I'm gonna have to do a lot of tent camping. <laughs> to really test out these tents, I might do a lot of tent camping in 23. All right, we're gonna move on to our next, our next Friday's finds a sponsor you remember y'all remember you know the bell tent hold on i gotta pitch that anyway so i'll just show it to you you remember two mount you know that company <laughs> that tent they sent me a box too let's go open that box we gotta go back in time 
beautiful thing about video. We can go back in time and then we can jump back forward in the future. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get confused. Where, what, what time is it? You know that little 10 foot bell tent that saved me down there at Galveston Island State Park? That's from the MC store. That's the to mount tent. They, the MC store said, it's getting cold. I bet you're cold in that tent. We got something that might be of interest to you. You want to check it out? Of course I said yes. Let's see what they sent us. Instruction manual. Those are always handy. Carry bag. Those are always handy. <laughs> Two pair of gloves. Those are always handy. This is actually titanium. We don't have a real good picture. Maybe you can see right there. That's what's in this box. Some assembly required. That's a chimney. Believe it or not. And that's a chimney cap. And that's a damper for the chimney. Cool kit and a couple of bolt of fasteners. Now this is a tent stove. Unlike the last wood burning device that we looked at, that was just kind of a fancy rocket stove. Not kind of, it was a fancy rocket stove. This is actually intended to go in your tent. It is made from titanium, so it is lightweight. Lots of, lots of foam stuff. Hinge pin was in the way. As you can tell, the north wind is a really blowing today. I'm not sure how that goes in. Maybe I need to look at the instructions. That helped, dude. Hey, dude, why don't you read the instructions? We got the legs folded out, we got the 
things popped up. So this, this is the this is the burn plate. We've got two screws that go somewhere. Now I understand. So we have these two long screws that actually go into the bottom of the burn plate. And then that goes into the stove. So you have airflow going under. That's how that's designed. All right. There's also a wall, a heated wall. So you get a secondary burn on your wood gas. It superheats the air as it comes in and helps burn that. Some assembly required. That's what. That's all right. I like some assembly required products. Actually, I got that backwards. Okay, we're just about done. The next and final step is putting the chimney assembly together. Before we move into that, I actually have something else that I'm gonna show you. This is not sponsored, but it's necessary. I searched long and hard for this. This is a fire pad, fire mat. So once we have the tent set up, this will go underneath the stove and protect the floor of our tent. So it says some people may be sensitive to fiberglass, so wear the gloves when you're handling the mat because it is fiberglass. Non-toxic. If you're sensitive to fiberglass, that's what they provide you with gloves. Don't don't put this in your sleeping bag. You would not be happy with the outcome. So once I have the tent put back up, we'll be checking that out. Meanwhile, we, we gotta burn some wood. I have it assembled. And that flue is, <laughs> as a challenge, Ended up having to get a, a long uh, rod to roll it around. But I've got it assembled for our first inaugural burn. When I was setting up that little wood burning stove on the patio, I did I did a couple of things that were not exactly correct. Uh, and it all had to do with the the flue pipe. 
as you can see we've got smoke coming out of there now and I've, I've got the the stove set up in the two mount bell tent this is the 10 foot from the mc store They're up so the wind doesn't affect it you can see the heat coming out of the, the flue but looking at the shadow there one of the things that i had wrong ooh, <laughs> putting out a lot of heat that. So one of the things that I had wrong was the way that the damper connected to the connected to the the stove itself. So the flue should go outside the collar and then it's clamped in place. That little thing is kicking out some serious heat. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little worried about the the opening there. I don't know if I need to make a a metal collar to slip over that so that we don't lose heat up the flue. Man, that's kicking out some heat. I need to set up the big top. <laughs> I think that'll I think that'll do a really good job heating the big top because it is certainly heating up this little tent maybe too much so it's so hot right now you wouldn't be able to sleep in this tent <laughs> yeah we've got smoke coming out of there now i think that's a that's a heck of a good value Com transports flat in that case, it, the whole stove fits in there, and it puts out enough heat for that big tent. Cool. I want to give a special thanks to the MC Store for being a returning sponsor to the Dude RV Friday's Finds Show. If you're looking for a good wood burning stove for your tent, that's a doer, right? That's that's a get her done job right there. That's a good one. Very, very, very happy with that. And if you're in the market for a simple, easy to set up, inflatable frame tent, the Baralar, I think that's how you pronounce it, Baralara. Baralier, Baralier. The Baralier tent gets the job done. That brings us to the end of this edition of Friday's Finds. If this is your first visit to Dude RV and you enjoy this kind of content, I would be most honored if you'd consider clicking on the subscribe button. Tents are not the only thing I do. I'm Dude RV because I got an RV. But sometimes I have an F-150 RV. Sometimes I just have a tent. <laughs> but I make all kinds of videos. And for those of you who have been following along, thank you, I, sh I really appreciate it. I am honored that you invite me into your home. And for my patrons, I'm most grateful. You rock. All right, y'all come back now, you hear?